Welcome to Mechanic today here in Mechanic. We have a 2015 Ford Focus, and on this Ford Focus, we're going to show you the process to be able to replace your rear brakes and rotors. Right? So there's a little bit different that we have to do on the back, um, and there's just one more different step that we need to do. So first, you would uh, raise your vehicle, support it on jack stands. Um, also have the wheels chalked so it doesn't roll away, and we do not want our e-brake on at this time. So we've removed the tire, and we can now have access to the components that we need to. We have two uh, number seven millimeter um, Allen wrenches or Allen size bolts that we need to remove to get the uh, caliper away from the carrier. And then um, once we get that removed and backed up, we also need to spin this caliper back. It uh, needs to be spun to be able to um, depress it. You can, it's not one that you can just press back because the, uh, the parking brake, uh, a lot of people call it e-brake, but the parking brake is, has a mechanism that is built into this, and so you need to manually spin this back. So start with, let's get these uh, dust boot covers off. All right. We have the dust boot covers off. Now we need our size seven millimeter to undo these. There are there are technically there are bolt slash the glide pin and all of one. You can spin them and kind of push back a lot of times, depending on how gunked up these are, and they will um, reach back. We also we need to get this little anti-chatter um, clip to come off. We're going to be reusing this. Um, our kit for the uh, brakes and rotor it didn't come with it, um, but if it does come with a new one, just go ahead and use the new one. But we will reuse the old one. Okay, now we have that undone. Like I said, we can't really uh, press it back without spinning it, so we're going to just uh, use some uh, pry bar method to be able to get these two components separated. And this is where, if you had the parking brake set, you wouldn't be able to get these to pop off. So, took a little bit, but we were able to get that off. So, you can either do this now or you can do it later, but we'll just do it now. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna spin this um, backwards. And when the manual actuation of the parking brake, it spins this out. And so we need to spin that backwards to be able to uh, depress this brake caliper to be able to replace our brakes. Um, this is what's done on the rear brakes of this 2015 Ford Focus. If it had an electronic parking brake, that would be done a little bit differently, but this one has the manual actuated park brake. So if you were to manually actuate it, which is this little arm here, say we use a screwdriver to manually actuate it, you will see this spin around and, and come out. Now, of course, you don't want in this position, you don't want to do it too much because we don't want to get it to extend too far. But I'm just showing you the example of what it does. So when you pull the e-brake or parking brake, this piston moves outward ever so slightly, but we need to spin this backwards to be able to retract it. So to do that, you need a tool that you can rent at your, you can rent in or buy it at your local auto parts store. And um, something similar to this, there's various different ones. There's ones that some people, you can attach to uh, an extension and it just will grab those. It's got a bunch of different sizes on it. I've never had the best of luck with that. This tool itself does, it applies pressure and as you spin, you continue to tighten some of the pressure and push it back and spin it. You just, you need to line up the, the in the kit that you uh, buy and or rent. It has all these different sizes depending on what size the vehicle would need to use. And like this is one that could potentially use just with a extension or your 3 8 drive to just spin it backwards. But you find the right one, and actually the one that's right there is the one that will work for this vehicle without having to use any of the adapters. 
And so now we will take this and be able to put it in here. I'm going to line up those, the, the two valves there with deal holes that are in the uh, unit and then spin this its left hand left hand threads to tighten and then we turn that right to spin this backwards I have yet to come across one that needs to go left handed I've heard but I've yet to come across that so like I said we apply some pressure here and then spin this clockwise and this will retract as it spins. So we got a good uh, revolution on that. I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure. And then we'll just keep doing this process. I'll get like a one rotation and then apply more pressure um, so that we don't lose the, the, the pins don't come out. Some do a lot easier and some are a bit stiff. Um, of course, want it to move fairly easily for this process. And if it is real stiff, then you may need to be replacing the whole uh, caliper unit itself. So I'm just doing the, the hand uh, pressure right now. There we go. And so we have resistance now. So that's as far as we need to take this back. I mean, it was it was spinning fairly easily, and so you don't want to keep putting a ton of pressure on it. And we just we got to that stopping point, and so that is that um, completely retracted. And now we can remove our our tool here, and we can see that this is essentially almost in the same orientation of when we took it off, but that's not as necessary. Now, if it was an electronic one. That is a little bit different. That you want to keep this so that it lines up with the little pins on the back of the uh, the brake pad. This unit itself, there are no pins, or it's a smooth brake pad that goes there, and so that's not as necessary. So now we'll set this up out of the way and be able to remove the carrier bracket to be able to remove the rotor. So this carrier is held on with a 13 millimeter. Right. So I removed the, uh, the two bolts to hold the carrier back and on. Now we need to remove this rotor. Um, you know, most likely need some hammer. There we go. Remove the old rotor. Now, get a little clean up here. So we got that uh, cleaned up. Um, most of that uh, rust lip down, wire brush it, whatever you got. Now, ready to, well, put the rotor on. Then we can put the carrier on. Yep. So we have our new rotor. Right one is to line it up. Now, you can also hold this in with one of the lug nuts so that it doesn't move around on you if you have that issue. Now, we'll put our uh, carrier bracket on, tighten the uh, 13 millimeter bolts that hold that on there. All right, so we've got the carrier bolts tightened. Now we can put our brake pads on there, and these are the, the brake pads that go on there. The one with the, uh, the two dots straight up and down, those go on the outside on this model, and then the ones with the uh, dots in the spring mechanism go on the back side. Um, because this model doesn't have the electronic parking brake, if it had the electronic parking brake, a lot of times these dots would go on the back so it can line up with the corresponding holes on it. But because this is a manual parking brake, they want the smooth side on the back. 
And so we did uh, rotate that manual parking brake backwards to get it into place there. We put a little brake um, grease on our uh, glide pins here, slash bolts. And then tighten up our seven millimeter bolts that hold this caliper unit to the carrier. And because you got that little spring in there, you gotta kind of push down on it as you um, get the bolts to line up. We're pushing on the caliper toward um, the center of the rotor to get those to line up. Okay, now um, don't forget to put your dust boots on there. Keep the dirt and debris out of your glide pins. And uh, now you'd be able to, to put our um, anti chatter spring back on here. And so you need to start it, whether you do the top or the bottom, get it down into that hole there. Then if you start that one and be able to pull that and get it in, and then you just need to tap it in with something. So now that, that clip is back in there. If you've got a new one in your brake kit, you just use the new one. If the old one, um, if you don't break the old one, take it out, install that. And now you'd be ready, put your tire on, lower the vehicle, part the tire spec, pump your brakes a couple times to be able to get the calipers to um, be close to the brake and not be, and so you'll stop like you're supposed to. Thanks for watching you, Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.